Bobby McCutcheon from the library in King Street, Williamsburg County Library, and I'm here today with Mr. Wendell Boisel at the Williamsburg County Museum. If you've never been here, you need to come because Mr. Wendell has the most wonderful things you've ever seen. One of them we're standing in front of, and it's huge. This is a yardstick. You all know how to measure inches. This is 36 inches. Look how wide this thing is. And look how long it is. And look at the depth or the width of the hull here, how fat it is. You don't see these every day. This is a very unusual boat that Mr. Wendell's in charge of. And he's in charge of it because he loves history and artifacts, especially from our county. And he's gonna tell us where this came from, how it was used, and how it was made. Mr. Wendell. Well, thank you. I appreciate that introduction. This boat uh, is made of one cypress tree. The boat measures 20 feet long, 39 inches wide, and 23 inches deep. It was dug out of a heartwood of a single cypress tree over 50 inches in diameter using hand tools similar to this, it's a foot adds, and also this called a fro. And these, these tools were used to dig out the, the material inside to create this canoe so that they could use it as part of the commercial activity that took place between King Street and Georgetown. Uh, it was probably crafted in the late 1700s or early 1800s and used to transport cypress shingles and uh, possibly rice and also some turpentine products from this area down to uh, Georgetown. What's a cypress shingle? A uh, cypress shingle would have been uh, small segments of the cypress chipped out mm -hmm. that they could use to put on tops of houses. If you look at the, some of the historic houses here in town, uh, Mr. Bubba Jenkinson's house and Mr. Billy Jenkinson's house, you'll see that they were crafted with shaped shingles, cypress shaped shingles that were put on there uh, similar to what they were when they were built. Mm -hmm. And that helped uh, to keep the rain out of the homes. From the turpentine products they would use in the shipbuilding industry to waterproof the boats and the canoes that were used in Georgetown and along the Black River. So turpentine came from a filling station? Turpentine came, came from? from the pine trees that were mm -hmm plentiful in this area. They would collect the sap and have to distill that sap down to get to the uh, materials, the turpentine products, the tar and some of the other. So they distills. cooked the sap? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 20th century owners of this uh, boat were the family of John L. Robertson of Pennsylvania. They owned property in Williamsburg County near Morrisville. And um, it was through their heirs of his late daughter, Natalie Robertson Spencer of Denver, Colorado, and the recognition of the boat's historical significance by a consulting forester, Al Epps, that the boat was donated to the Rice Museum in Georgetown, South Carolina. Uh, until the Rice Museum was uh, ready to display it in their facility, they kindly let us uh, maintain it here in King Street on display. And as you can see it now, uh, everyone can come in here and take a look at it. And, and touch it. And touch it and feel it and see how heavy it was. It took about 12 people to move this uh, into the building when it was first uh, moved into this current location here at the Carnegie Building. Yeah, what's this? These spikes at the end, we're only guessing, but my guess is that they were used to kind of hold the rudder uh, in place or uh, maybe to tie off the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a variety of possible uh, uses, but um, that's my guess. And these were all handmade Yes. Also. Let's see how long this boat is. And the boat, you also see, we have this big oar that was found with the boat. This was used probably just as a, um, as a guide or a rudder, but it also could have been used to pole from the bottom of the river, especially in shallow water. Or actually, uh, if you're a really big, strong person, I suppose you could have paddled with it, but I don't know about that. <laughs> and how about that wooden piece sitting in the boat? 
These are hand uh, carved uh, bowls that were used in the homes of people, um, probably similar to the times when these, uh, these boats were made. Um, people use them for a variety of uh, purposes. They uh, made their doughs for the bread and biscuits. They, um, later years and currently now, people treasure these types of bowl, old bowls and, and things for use to, uh, as uh, servings for barbecue. Mm -hmm. And uh, But they're very, very useful and all handmade. Everything back then, you couldn't go to the store and buy, you had to make it. How about this? That long wooden piece. This also similar to this type. It was just a longer bowl used for different, maybe a servings, mm -hmm. different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And this ring here, that would be handmade as well. Yes, the ring was probably used as uh, a number of things. It could have been used to tie the boat off at the dock and also to use to uh, pull the boat back up the river. Mm -hmm. And it's held together here with some handmade pegs. Yeah, big pegs were stuck in here. This is probably something that got wore out over time. So mm -hmm. they had to have a way of replacing so them. So they, they could pop it? that loose and put in a new piece when they needed to. Nice. Now, it would be hard to find a, a tree this large to make something like that these days? I don't know. Um, there's some of the uh, people that travel the river quite frequently, and uh, you go into some of the deeper swamps, and the cypress trees are, are fairly large in some of them. So it wouldn't surprise me they could find another mm -hmm. tree like this. But we should care for them, not let oh, yeah. those be taken out. One thing they like cypress for uh, to use in water is it, uh, it very seldom deteriorates in water. Oh. You could, uh, there, are, there are logs that are sunk in the river and other places and lakes that are pretty much the same way they were when they were originally felled into the water. Mm -hmm. um, and they get harder, don't they, as they sit in that water? Yes. Is that right? What else would you like us to know about history and why you take care of things like this and why it's important to you? Well, I love history. I've uh, not educated as a historian, but uh, I've always been interested in history and mm -hmm. the people and how places came to be. And uh, knowing where these things came from is important. Um, it helps you gain an understanding of uh, how the town came to be, and uh, also the contributions that every pe all the people made. Um, one thing, we're having uh, uh, an annex built next door that will house an African-American history section, because right now in the town of King Street, we have very limited access to that kind of history. And um, I think it's important to show that history and, their, and the contributions that were made from the revolution uh, through the Civil War and fight for freedom to civil rights, the voting. Uh, uh, we're, we have a, uh, one of the things that's going to be next door and it's opened up this September will be a uh, tribute or an exhibit on Martin Luther King and his visit to King Street and about voting. And I just think history is just full of interesting stories and interesting people. Um, there's a story, we have a book here about Conrad Constein, mm -hmm. who used to run a boat up and down the Black River, taking people on boat rides to show them the river, and also they'd take them for picnics. And uh, he was actually an orphan and was brought up here uh, to learn a trade uh, in the day. And he actually ended up fighting uh, in the Civil War, went through some terrible battles in Antietam and Gettysburg, and had the opportunity to go back to Gettysburg on its 50th anniversary to meet with the uh, soldiers on both sides. And uh, it was a, it's described in the book. It's, a, it's just an interesting thing. I love to talk about those things. So um, children can be really interested in history too. I was always really interested in history as a child. And they can come talk to you. Right. Absolutely. A seven-year-old's uh, welcome at the museum. Yes, the museum is open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday currently mm -hmm. uh, from 10 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning to 3 p.m. every afternoon, Tuesday, right. Wednesday, and Thursday. And summer vacation's coming up, and Wendell's here. I will be here. Great. Well, thank you for letting us come in. Um, is there anything more you'd like us to know? 
I don't think so. Uh, just come and enjoy and find something yourself. You may, you may be interested in finding some things about your families, mm -hmm. uh, your family histories. We have some genealogy uh, information downstairs and we have several exhibits up here on the schools, the churches, the businesses, some of the uh, public servants that came from King Street. So it's a, it's a variety of things you can be interested in. So come see us. It has a rich, long history. Yes. Come see us. Thank you so much. We appreciate you having You're us welcome. today.